Don here in Florida and I'm back for part two of the uh, Delta bandsaw transmission modification and this is the bottom side of the transmission uh, let's jump right into it okay all right I, I cleaned this transmission up just a little bit uh, just basically so I can get the shaft cleaned up in case the seals still good I don't want to ruin that seal as I pull the shaft out so looking at the back side of the transmission here you can actually see uh, light to dark where it bolts up against the back of the case. And remember I said I wanted to put a plate in here to uh, cordon off this area or to separate this, this inner area here from the outer area so we could have a dry side for the pulley and a wet side for the uh, gears. So when we do this, that plate's going to have to go across this top edge now obviously sealant from the outer part of the case is going to have to seal the top here so no big deal we're just going to have to pay particular attention when we start uh, cutting that out so let's go ahead and pull this apart and i'll show you a couple other things i noticed all right see here now that we got it apart I think the one thing that kind of sticks out to me is this where this upper shaft here goes into here I want to put a pulley on there but look at that I think I'm gonna to have to mill that out of there for that to work so that's okay though that's what we got to mill for so Let's take a couple measurements here. Three quarters. And is that five eighths? So this may work out really nice. Okay, I got the uh, gear case. Uh, being cleaned up here in the uh, mineral spirits so the inside of that case uh, with the bearings they look good the bearings are nice and smooth so I'm just cleaning out any garbage that might be in there that that's, this side's actually pretty good I'm just trying to get the outside now so once that's cleaned up it'll be good for paint and stuff uh, over here again this bearing I popped that off the end of the shaft this is the shaft right here. I'm going to have to take that down to uh, 5 eighths, I think it is, which is nice because this end here is half inch, so that'll be larger. And that's to meet this pulley diameter here, internal bore. Interestingly enough, uh, this doesn't have a key in it, so uh, we're going to have to probably make an indentation on this shaft as well for this to lock onto it. But that that's okay with a little bit of... Uh, Loctite once it's locked in it's not going anywhere and This is where we're gonna to have to do the most modification We're gonna to have to take out most of this webbing because once this goes in place Not only do we need room for the pulley here But we also need room for the belt to go by so most of this webbing is gonna to have to come out of here and uh, another thing we're gonna to have to do is the width of this we're gonna to have to take down by almost half because we're gonna put a plate in that mates up against here so let's go get set up i think i'm going to go ahead and turn this first so and then we'll uh, go ahead and do this on the milling machine
Okay, so I made a, a mark where I, I want my um, my flat to start at. So we're gonna bring it down. And we can always take out more if we have to. Okay, I just spent 15 minutes getting this all squared up here so that we could take some off. We need to take uh, 120 off of this because that's the thickness of the sheet that's going to go on there. So we're going to do that. I chopped out the uh, webbing that was in here. Uh, with the angle grinder and I'm going to clean that up after we, we take this off. So let's see how this goes. them high spots first. Okay, so we got that chomped out all good. I already checked to make sure the pulley had clearance. It's got plenty of clearance, so. And we took uh, 120 off of here. So now this plate, this is 120. I went ahead and made a template. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, trace it out and cut it on the bandsaw. our drill points. Okay, so I went ahead and put the dowels back in here and we got our holes drilled out. Uh, wanted to put the dowels in so I could line everything up. There we go. So the plate will fit just like that. And this area here where the gear comes across, that's where it butts up against the casting like that, the main casting. So the main casting itself seals this. So what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of a RTV on this top edge here, right across here. And when that butts in there, it'll, it'll seal it nicely. So all our holes seem to be lined up pretty good here. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased about that. So now what I got to do is we got to make a um, mark here and here for where the shafts are going to come through. So let me go find something to mark that with. Okay, I thought I saw it making a mark on there with this. This is the original shaft that goes through it. So let's see what we get out of that. Look at that. Perfect hole. <laughs> So now we got one point to drill. We got to find the other spot. Okay, so I wimped out and just did it with math. 
so I, I found the center line here and then just measured up so I'm gonna go ahead and go drill this I'll be right back okay well I'm looking pretty much square back into the bearing oh got my finger stuck I think I got them pretty good so all right let's give us a little test run here just to see how it's uh, gonna fit together and then we'll have to take it apart and okay so this goes down in here like that thump in there make sure it's seated and then this one here we're going to clean that up just a little bit There she goes. I haven't decided if I'm going to use grease in this or lubricant. So, but we're just going to test fit it, put a little grease in there so we don't tear everything up while we're doing this. So, we got that. Well, I guess we just have to do it like this. So,. Okay, so jam up number one. I didn't cut this back far enough, so I'm gonna have to throw that back in the lathe and, and uh, turn that back just a little bit further. So I'm gonna go do that. Oh my goodness, with the background noise here, everybody seems to want to do something on Sunday. All right, so that's why we do this test fitting now make sure that uh, everything goes together smoothly when we do the final assembly so I just turned that back with the uh, atlas it only took a minute so there we go and now I've got room back behind there for a seal so I'm gonna have a seal back behind each one of these all right so it goes just like that and then the pulley will go on here like this. Here's the big secret. You got to put this in first before you put the cover on here otherwise you're never going to get it together so that'll go on just like this now those those pins there they're going to have to cause staff to knock this in but that's okay there and then the pulley is in here like this and that'll go on this like that inside of there so just like that so I hope I did the math right for this it's this I measured it out at 22 inches so we'll find out here on the test run so let me go ahead and put the hub back together first to make our shaft seals here to seal this plate back here to keep any grease or oil from coming out this way we're going to take some of these uh, cups here these are for uh, brake cylinders and these will flatten out against the back like this okay make a nice seal here and that rubber with the uh, grease in it will will keep it uh, lubricated and allow it to, to move freely on there so we'll take one of these here and our punch and we'll see if we can pop a hole down through the middle here. This rubber is tough.
There we go. See that? I can just trim that out with a razor now. This will fit right down over here. That. Okay. We'll put some grease on there. Do the next one. There we go, right through that time. And then this cover will fit right back down over that. It should push right up against those seals which it does. So those seals, now that they're pushed up against the back of that plate, should keep anything from coming out onto the dry side. So I think that's gonna work good. Yeah, see, it, it didn't deform that seal back into the gear, so. I do believe that's gonna work well. All right, so basically I've got my assembled transmission here and I'm ready to go ahead and make my third attempt at putting it back together. Uh, I had to shorten the belt twice, and when I say shorten, I mean run back to the parts store and buy two short belts. I, 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 I've learned not to trust those online calculators at this point. I never seem to get the right exact length anymore, so trial and error. Anyway, so the transmission's all assembled, and we're going to go ahead and stick it in here. Okay, so as it turns out, 18 inch belt with a two inch on the bottom and a four and a half inch pulley on the top is the perfect size with just a little bit of tension on it. And I'm not worried about that slipping at all in there now. And as you can see, since I took out that other gear up here, which would have caused this shaft to turn in the opposite direction. Okay, notice when I turn this clockwise this turns counterclockwise by taking that gear out these two shafts turn opposite but i don't have a problem with that because i'm going to be using a uh, three-phase motor which can run either direction and when i run directly on this shaft for wood cutting i can run the motor one direction and then when i'm metal cutting i can simply run it in the other direction now this is going to cause the gears to actually mesh in reverse of their normal uh, mesh, but that's not a problem. Um, matter of fact, it's to my advantage because now they're wearing on a new surface. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna run this in an oil bath or I'm going to run it with just grease. If I decide to do an oil bath, I'm probably gonna put a filler plug in here and a drain plug at the bottom. And if I decide to run it just grease, I'll probably put a grease circ in right here so that I can just add a dab of grease now and then. Uh, I think probably I'm favoring grease right now simply because I'm not running this every day. It'll just be an occasional use saw and the maintenance just be lower that way. Uh, the oil itself would have a propensity to want to try to leak, whereas the grease pretty much just stays put. Uh, I still have ways to go on this saw. I still have to disassemble all this. Obviously I have to paint this. There's a few other things I have to do here. Um, but for the most part, now the modification to the transmission is done okay now i could hook a motor on here turn that shaft and we'd be good as long as we're at it let's take a look at one thing here i'm going to mark this shaft and we're going to find out exactly what the ratio is input to output and that'll allow me to zero in even closer as to what i need for pulleys to hook to my motor so let's do that before we do anything else 
One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's about just over eleven to one. So eleven point two five to one, I'd say. You know, I could have used the key way right there. I didn't even think about that. That's pretty stupid of me. Okay, that's it for the transmission modification. I hope you uh, got something out of that. I modified the uh, top part with the video on the hub modification, and then I modified the uh, lower part of the transmission in this video. So bringing it together. Now we have a transmission unit that we can use to uh, run this bandsaw. So uh, stay tuned for future videos in this series. And again, from Florida, Donna.